What is going on guys? Thank you so much for joining me here today on this Thursday, April 20th, 2023 for another Metallic episode of Music of Destruction coming to you from the MOD Crypt. As always, bringing you the best in metal related content right here on YouTube on one of the only metal channels you need. Make sure you check out Metal Ben's Chronicles. Also check out Justin Horrible of Hell's Headbangers and Ken's Death metal crypt those are my three favorite metal creators on the platform other than myself obviously if you missed anything in the past week you know the drill click the eye the menu pops down all the videos are there to get caught up on as well as the home page i would certainly appreciate it remember to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss anything mod bringing you the underground only opinionated and brutally honest, the only way to fucking be. Welcome to Top 15 Thursdays here on the channel. I know it's been a month since I've put one of these out. Tonight, I'm excited for another one of these awesome Top 15s that I'm sure you guys enjoy. Tonight, I'm doing my Top 15 Metal Guitarists. Yes, I'm redoing this video because it has changed substantially since three years ago. Yes, that's right. This is a very intriguing list. And remember, before you open your fucking mouth, this is my list not yours so don't go asking me stupid questions like why isn't this guitarist on your list because you're gonna get instantly fucking blocked i'm not here to answer your stupid questions if somebody isn't on the list it's probably because they're not one of my favorite guitar players pretty fucking self-explanatory all right let's just get into it here on mod coming in at number 15 justin broderick of god flesh industrial metal pioneers uh this guy is absolutely incredible when it comes to creativity emotion songwriting and his riffs were so damn influential in the realm of industrial metal whenever you, anybody talks about industrial metal it is a crime not to mention god flesh and justin broderick because this guy's one of the most amazing metal musicians of all fucking time and his guitar style and tone is unmistakable this guy is an absolute god from Godflesh. Justin Broderick gets number 15. Coming in at number 14, we have a sludge metal Black Death Thrash legend, Sammy Duet of Acid Bath and Goat Whore. One of the most incredibly creative, visceral, uh, in just absolutely mind blowing guitarists in metal of today and yesteryear. Acid Bath, one of the most amazing fucking bands of all time. One of the pioneering bands of sludge metal as well. And what really brought Acid Bath's music to just such new levels was the tone of Sammy Duet's guitar work on albums like When the Kite String Pops and Pagan Terrorism Tactics, which are the only two albums Acid Bath would go on to release because of the tragic death of Audi P3. But yes, I mean, Goat Whore, an amazing band as well. Sammy Duet, whenever he plays the damn guitar, you know who the fuck you're listening to. He has such an incredible knack for tone and brought a lot of heaviness to the guitar world of metal. So yes, number 14, Sammy Duet. Coming in at number 13, another sludge metal legend with Kirk Weinstein of Crowbar and Down. How could this guy not be on the list? One of the most powerfully influential players of all time his guitar tone is absolutely unreal created so many slow end churning crushing riffs with crowbar that when you put on crowbar you know who that is playing the guitar it is kirk weinstein he has a unique tone and style all of his own that i think more people should take notice of that may not in the world of sludge metal a lot of people go for these super fast technical guitarists i prefer soul and passion in my guitar work and kirk weinstein is one of the gods of soul and passion number 13 kirk weinstein of crowbar and down coming in at number 12 we have another sludge metal legend jimmy bauer of i hate god and down the new orleans sludge metal legend himself Jimmy Bauer, one of the most influential guitarists of all time, especially when it comes to Southern Sludge Metal. This guy is a fucking god. And when anybody talks about New Orleans Metal, Jimmy Bauer is one of the first names out of people's mouths and for very good reason. He was also in Superjoint with Philip Anselmo and why the hell not? 
Jimmy Bauer, one of the most creative, emotionally soul power, soul powering guitarists in terms of the emotion and his riff styling, contributed so much to heavy metal. Number 12, Jimmy Bauer. Coming in at number 11, we have a thrash metal legend from Denmark with Michael Strutzer of Artillery. Yes, folks. I always knew when I was hearing Artillery because of Michael Stutzer's guitar work. Tragically, we lost his brother Morton and Josua Madsen was just a month ago. Very, very sad times for Artillery. But yes, Michael Stutzer, fucking amazing. Responsible for a lot of tone, a lot of that, you know, Danish thrash. Artillery are the pioneers of, among the pioneers of Danish thrash. In fact, I think that they are. But you knew when you put on Artillery, you could recognize Michael Strutzer's guitar work instantly. This is a very, very unique guitar player. One of the best, one of the most powerfully fast, visceral, and talented, but also full of soul and passion. Michael Strutzer of Artillery gets number 11. Coming in at number 10, guitar legend Larry Lalonde of Possessed went on to form Primus. Now, I may not be a Primus fan, but I respect the hell out of his work in Primus. But when he was with Possessed, holy shit, those riffs on seven churches are some of the most evil, diabolical, dark, hateful, and downright fucking chilling riffs of all time. One of the first to write the death metal riff was Larry Lalonde of Possessed. And of course, Legends, Godfathers, influential for so many bands. And Larry Lalonde, one of the most influential guitar players when it came to up and coming guitarists after him listening to seven churches i can imagine how many people were literally mind blown by how fucking talented and soulful and powerful this guy's riffs are larry lalonde gets number 10 from possessed coming in at number nine thrash metal legend creators guitarist and vocalist mili petroza how could I not put this guy on the list? Easily one of the most unique standout guitarists, powerful, visceral, absolutely incredible when it comes to creativity and songwriting. His riff styling, his tone, his pedals, his amps. I mean, all these guys, absolutely amazing. But Mili Petroza of Creator is one of the biggest standouts, in my opinion, when it comes to the world of metal guitarists and his leads, mind-blowing. Okay, this guy just blows people out of the water. Creators, Mili Petroza gets number nine. Coming in at number eight, obituary and disincarnate legend, James Murphy of death metal fame. How could I not put James Murphy on the list? Whenever you listened to obituary, you knew exactly who that was playing the guitar. Obituary's tone is unmistakable, and it's because of James Murphy, a fucking guitarist, Virtuoso, absolutely amazing when it came to the writing, when it came to his creation and his riff styling, his songwriting, his ideas, how he could make death metal sound so gross and evil, dark and foreboding because of his tone. Now, if you notice, I'm not talking about a lot about scales because I don't give a fuck about scales. I care about tone, soul, muscle and passion. James Murphy, one of the best from obituary and disincarnate of death metal fame. He gets number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have an absolute legend from death, Chuck Schaldner, man. Unbelievable. What another powerful pioneer and influencer for so many guitarists in the world today. When you put on death, you knew exactly what you were hearing. You knew that was Chuck Schaldner. Nobody sounds like Chuck. I don't give a fuck what anybody out there says. This guy had it all. One of the best in death metal and had a lot of progression to his riffs. There was a lot of creativity. There was a lot of different twists and turns in his writing and creatively one of the best standout guitarists of all fucking time. We miss you, Chuck. Unreal that he was taken from us at such a young age when he could have made so much more of a difference in the world of metal and influenced so many more people. Chuck Schull, Near of Death. Amazing, man. We miss you, Chuck. He gets number seven. Coming in at number six, we have death metal legend Carl Sanders of Nile, the founder of Nile. I'll, he, this guy had to go on the list. His guitar work is unmistakable. His tone, his riffs, his writing style, his power, his energy, his electricity, the presence that he commands, the attention that he commands, the respect that he commands is absolutely off the fucking charts and 
Nile are one of the best death metal bands of all fucking time. And it's all because of this man right here, Carl Sanders. One of the most unique tones I've ever heard in guitaring. And of course, yes, he does have some good scaling and leads, but he's very responsible for tone as well. One of the best, Carl Sanders of Nile gets number six. Coming in at number five, one of the riff lords of thrash metal in the darker aspect of the genre with Jim Durkin of Dark Angel, one of the most creatively passionate, crazy lunatics on stage as well. I cannot believe how incredible his guitar work was. We just lost him last month. Absolutely fucking tragic. Jim Durkin is one of the best in the game. He was so damn good. You knew that you were listening to Dark Angel when Jim Durkin hit that guitar. Very responsible for tone as well. He had his own sound, he had his own style, and one of the most amazingly talented players. He did have some technicality, but again, very soul-driven and passionate and tone-driven guitar work from him as well. Number five, Jim Durkin of Dark Angel. Coming in at number four, we have one of the black metal legends, a pioneer of Swedish black metal, Morgan Hackinson of Marduk. When it came to making guitar tones sound evil and take it to the next fucking level, you have to talk about Morgan Hackinson from Marduk, one of the best in black metal. He has such a cold, chilling, misanthropic, hateful guitar tone, but also very historical sounding, very atmospheric. There's a lot of uh, peaks and valleys to his guitar work. There's a lot of emotion and I really, really love Morgan Hackinson of Marduk. He is one of the most influential black metal guitarists ever and his fucking, uh, when he does his leads, absolutely incredible. When he does his tremolo picking, his shredding, he is just off the fucking map. Morgan Hackinson, without him, black metal would not be what it is today. He gets number four. Coming in at number three, we actually have two guitarists, so this one was a tie for third spot, Claudius Creamer and Daniel Gonzalez of Possessed. Now, the new lineup of Possessed is absolutely off the fucking charts, and these two maniacs are two of the best I've ever heard. Tech, there is some technicality to riff to the riffing, but again, very responsible for that tone, and one, two of the best guitarists in metal. I'm so happy that Jeff Becerra recruited these two maniacs because when you hear Possessed's new album, you know that's Daniel and you know that's uh, Claudius because their tones, their creativity, their songwriting, their passion and their emotion, their electricity is just through the fucking roof. Claudius Creamer and Dan Gonzalez of Possessed, Death Metal Legends, they get number three. Coming in at number two, the metal pioneer himself from Black Sabbath, Tony Iommi, the pioneer of the doom metal riff, the pioneer of the heavy metal riff. You know, when you put on some guitar, you're listening to Tony Iommi as soon as he hits that first note, very responsible for everything, okay? There is, there wouldn't be metal without Tony Iommi. There wouldn't be metal guitar without Tony Iommi. And he deserves all the love, respect, and praise in the fucking world for bringing this amazing music to us freaks. And Tony Iommi had such a knack for songwriting, he had such a knack for where to place riffs, how to place riffs, especially when it came to the lower end doom sound, which Pentagram would go on to perfect. Um, he's just absolutely amazing, man. Tony Iommi is a legend. He is one of, the le one of the biggest legends in metal, and Tony Iommi, we love you. Without you, we wouldn't have heavy metal. He gets number two. Coming in at number one, Pantera's Dimebag Daryl Lance Abbott. The pioneer of the groove metal guitar tone. When you knew Dime, you knew Dime was on the stage. You knew Dime was hitting notes in the riff, hitting riffs in the studio. When he puts his fucking guitar on, you know that's Dime Big Daryl. One of the most responsible guitar players when it came to tone, when it came to emotion, when it came to soul, passion, everything, electricity. This guy could make his fucking guitar talk. He could shit in a bucket on stage, j drunk on a 40 of Jack Daniels or Wild Turkey, and still play with perfection. Doesn't matter how hungover he was, he'd hit that stage and it would click like a machine and he could fucking fly. Philip on Summel's words there. I mean, th it's Dimebag Daryl Lance Abbott. There is nobody in metal that's better than him. I don't give a fuck who says who this, this, and this. It isn't gonna matter to me because when it comes to his tone, his writing, his riffs, his creativity, what he was responsible for when it came to more forms of extreme metal that Pantera would help you know, be the flag bearers for it. It's it's unmistakable. It's undeniable. It's undebatable. It's fucking dime bag. Daryl Lance Abbott gets my number one. Hail the fucking underground. We miss and love you, Diamond Vince. 
Very, very sad that they're gone, man. Incredible. Dimebag Daryl Lance Abbott, number one from Pantera. And Damage Plan. He was also in Damage Plan. All right, guys, there you have it. Another top 15 in the books here on the channel. Hope you enjoyed the premiere here today. If you're new, hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Merchandise on the home page. Click the store tab. Janelle's working on new designs with 3D artwork. She's making a new logo for me right now as well for my thumbnail. So thank you to Janelle. Join the channel right now. Become an MLD Elite VIP. You get great perks. Two forty nine for your first month. Four ninety nine thereafter. Hit that join button. You get access to exclusive content, review requests within reason, ban interviews, cadaver right, cryptworm, and holocaust coming up on the channel this year. You also get access to members only live streams and Brothers from Hell collaborations with myself and Metal Bands Chronicles. If you are a metal YouTuber and you'd like to collaborate, we just did Possessed Revelations of Oblivion. That one was awesome. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing Zasters to violate the oblivious, so look forward to that. Have an awesome night, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video. We will see you for Metal Album Warfare Fridays and Brothers from Hell Hails.